Today, as in the day you are watching this video, is my birthday. And I figured that would be the perfect opportunity for me to gift you with some of my favorite tools and plugins, not only for After Effects, but just in general for the creative work that I do. But before I get into the list itself, I want to say a quick thank you to today's video sponsor, Motion Array, which we will be talking about a little bit more later on in this video because they have some sick stuff. But also make sure to check out my previous video where I covered some of my favorite plugins for After Effects specifically, which you can check up in the corner or down in the description below as well. But with that being said, let's talk about the first item on my list. This first plugin, which is extremely slept on, shout out Sky for putting me on, is essentially a MP4 renderer. Now back in the day, After Effects didn't used to have a native MP4 renderer, so you'd need something like Media Encoder, which let's be honest, sucks to get your MP4 files or another form of conversion. And that's where Anubis, which is a paid plugin by BattleX comes into play. It essentially lets you render out quicker and more seamlessly from After Effects and get MP4 files. But that's not all that it does. There's a couple features that I love. One of them is the naming structure. You can set it to just take the name of the composition that you're working with. And then what I typically do is add an underscore and V1 to the end of the file. Every time I then re-render that composition, it automatically shifts it up to V2, V3, V4, etc. And that just helps me from having files like, this is the final, I swear, final, final, final V17. So just keeps it a little bit cleaner and easier to work with. It also supports the output module presets, so I don't have to set that up every single time. I can just select the ProRes 444 or ProRes 422. Last but not least, it has the MP4 render feature, which can be toggled on or off. And I love using that because it doesn't mean that I necessarily Time to talk about the second one. My second pick on the list is not so much a single plugin, but more of a resource slash tool, and that is Motion Array, which also happens to be today's video sponsor. Before I give you the scoop on my favorite plugin slash templates on Motion Array, I wanna talk a little bit more about the platform because it's pretty sick. See, it's kind of like a marketplace where they have everything you need for any sort of creative work. They have music, sound effects, templates, project files, they have plugins, they have pretty much everything. Now to my favorite plugin slash templates. The first one is made by Matt Voice. You might already know him, super talented UK artist. He's worked with some really big brands like Netflix and Nike, but him and Motion Array have partnered up and made a really cool template. I actually covered a similar text animation in a previous video, so you can always go and check that out, but now you can just get the pack and get that result way, way faster. Another favorite of mine is the TV damage plugin, which kind of makes your footage look like it was displayed on an old CRTV like this except you don't have to go through the trouble of setting up 17 cables to get a result. You can just do it straight in After Effects at the click of a button. That's only a fraction of what they have on there. No matter whether you use After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, or even CapCut, you can benefit so much from this. If you're interested in spicing up your animations, your videos, and just wanna be more efficient, then I highly recommend going into the description and using the link there where you can get $50 off when you sign up for the annual subscription. Fantastic deal. Again, I just wanna say thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring this video and for helping me out in creating some really cool graphics for this video, like the title cards you've been seeing. Now the third item on my list is Void, which is another plugin by BattleX. This time it is free though. If you watch any of my previous videos, you've probably seen me use this and it's essentially a better way of creating nulls. They do have a few other features, but I don't use them at all, so I can't speak to them. In the new version in particular, they've added a lot of really cool features like being able to control points on a path with the voids, kind of like create nulls from paths type of thing, but just at the click of a button so it's a little bit easier, or even controlling gradient points, as well as being able to link individual properties to that null instead of it just controlling the whole layer. And I love it because whenever you have, let's say a, an array of different items or a different, like kind of laid out in a different way, the null created with the void will go in the center of all those items. So it's a little bit different in the way it works compared to a regular null, which is always centered at the middle of the composition. And sometimes you need one or the other, but most of the time I use void just because it's a lot easier and you can control a lot more with it. The fourth essential plugin slash tool on my list is decompose text. Now you can pick any sort of text exploder, it doesn't really matter, and it's also free. Gotta love that, I love free stuff. But essentially what it does is it lets you split text up into its own layers. So instead of having one text layer, you can either have it in words, characters, or even lines, which is just super useful if you're working with text a lot and especially doing subtitles or something like that where you want a little bit more control than usual, kind of like this tutorial that you can check up here. As I touched upon a little bit, the main feature is that you can split it up into words, characters, blah, 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 but it has two ways of working, at least decomposed text that I use. You can either pick 
to use it uh, with expressions, which then keeps all the words or the letters or whatever in the exact position that they are. But using this method makes it a little bit harder to make changes to the actual text. It's a weird way that it works, but it's really good if you just need it to stay exactly on there and maybe just do a simple slide position animation or something like that. The other way is if you want to get a little bit more creative with the position of the text, but it's super easy to make changes to the text later on, like changing the font, colors and stuff like that without having to go too much trouble. So kind of two ways of working for two different scenarios, both super useful and I use them both quite often as well. So it's not like one is completely obsolete. My fifth pick on this list is Film Vision V2, which is a power grade for DaVinci Resolve, which is just super helpful in color grading your footage. They also have a LUT version, which if you don't work in DaVinci Resolve is also great, but you just get that bit more control with the power grade. I love using this for all my videos, like this right now is I've graded this with the power grade. And I just love the Film Vision one by Sir because it's so neatly made. The colors are absolutely phenomenal. They have two versions. So they have a clean version, which is what I'm using right now. So it's just a little bit more natural and subtle. They also have the original version, which is a lot more stylized. Other than that, the halation in it is absolutely fantastic. Couple different methods you can pick between. I just use the standard one. And then the grain and the texture one in there is super, super neat. So oftentimes in my videos, especially in the talking heads like this, you'll see a little bit of that film dust and grain go across the screen. And that's all from this power grade. Super easy to work with and just looks super beautiful and makes my life a lot easier. And if you are an editor as well, it'll be super helpful for you. A while ago, I made these super smooth title card animations and I got a lot of requests to show how I actually made them. And to be honest, it's a lot simpler than what you might think because I used a plugin called Flex, which it is a paid plugin, but it is super, super useful. I initially was a bit too stubborn and I was trying to figure it out myself and it was just way too much work for the timeline that I had. And it also just didn't make sense to put so much work into it rigging it all up because it was so complex. So I figured, you know, might as well cave in and I'm so glad I did because this plugin is sick. Essentially what it does is it lets you move around shapes or even images and mats and all that sort of stuff. When you move one, it automatically shifts the scale of the other layers. So it just makes it super easy to chain together all different kinds of animations. And in my instance, a whole lot of squares. They also have a few different ways that you can operate these. So you have one where it squishes it. There's one where it keeps the proportion of whatever's inside. So they have a lot of flexibility, no pun intended there. And with that, my list is concluded. That is some of my favorite tools, plugins, and all that good kind of stuff that just helps me be more efficient in my workflow and create better stuff. And in particular, I highly recommend today's video sponsor, Motion Array. Thank you to them. They have so much cool stuff on there and that is truly something that I think every editor out there would benefit from just because you don't have to worry about creating a whole bunch of stuff yourself, which is always good. Time is money. But with that being said, I just wanna say thank you for watching along. Hopefully you go out and try some of these new tools and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanna say thank you for watching along and I'll see you again pretty soon. Peace out.